very happy day, and I thank you very much for having me on the program. Right, Senator Book, I listened to this so-called investor, Byron Booker, and he made certain allegations of you putting down phone. He contacted you uh, in regards to this particular Grand Etang uh, fiasco or de debacle. And, you know, he made mention of you mentioning, uh, you know, on TV and so on, uh, that uh, some Russians are investing and so on. You speak to that because I'm certain you heard what he said. Right. I, I heard what he says. I think it's important, first of all, to let you know that I have known Byron Booker for a very long time, since the days of the revolution. In fact, um, Byron was a pretty good friend of mine. And uh, we've never really had any, any problems or any differences. In 2012, while I was Minister of Finance, Byron came and insisted that I should give him duty-free concessions to bring in a car from the United States. I explained to him that uh, this is not how the system works. I cannot give him a concession of my own accord, and that these are matters the cabinet will have to decide upon. In the end, um, he got very furious and decided that I was letting him down, made a number of comments about after all he had done for the NDC, um, this is how we're treating him and so on. And since that time, Byron has gone on a crusade to try to discredit my name and to hurt me. Um, every morning on the beach in Grand Dance, uh, people report to me of all of the nasty things he's saying. I've not answered him, I've not bothered with him, because I know it's not true. And, um, you know, it demonstrates time and again that many of the people um, who are surrogates of the new National Party simply want to see what they can get from Grenada. And if they do not get what they want, they become hostile and aggressive, and they have the worst things to say. So I'm not troubled by Byron's comments, yeah? I want to make that clear. This is sour grapes for me not giving him concessions to bring in the car that he's now driving around Grenada. That's the fact. And he's told everyone that, and everybody knows that. So I start with that. But let me say uh, that, first of all, um, what the first thing that one has to do here, Kim, is to ask whether or not the project that Byron... Let, let, well, uh, I'll start this way. Um, Byron called me uh, two or three days ago. He did call. Uh, I did not know who it was. I didn't recognize the voice initially, and I don't recognize the number that he was calling from. He says, Mr. Burke, um, I hear you going around telling the Grenadian people that the government gives um, 30 acres of land to um, Russians in Granitan. I said, Byron, 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 let me stop you there. First of all, I did not make any such um, statements, and if we are going to start this conversation on you making false accusations against me, this conversation will not happen. Yes? Um, once I said that, I pushed him back and told him, listen, don't start with that. If you want to say something to me, say it, but don't start with a false accusation against me. He then stuttered a little bit and then says, well, I just want you to know that um, what you're going around telling people is a rumor. It's not true. I said, okay, thank you, and I ended the conversation there, yeah, so that there was no rudeness, there was no um, disrespect. I made it clear to him that if what he was calling to tell me was that, um, that um, the rumor that is being spread is not true, then thank you, and I ended the conversation there. Now, I want to say to you, though, looking at Byron last night, I became even more convinced that this statement by Byron is nothing but a hoax. Right? He was, he was set up to this. He was put to do this. And in fact, we, those of us who are concerned about Granitang must continue to be very concerned about Granitang and continue to demand clarity, demand explanations from the government of Grenada for this reason. First of all, um, back in uh, 2014, the Grenada Tourism Authority issued um, a report. In that report, Kim, the, uh, the authority explained that it was working on several projects. Um, you know, it was working on several tourism projects um, that it was considering for development. And one of those was um, a Grand Bataan Eco Village. Yes, this is the Grenada Tourism Authority in its annual official report. So Grand, the, the, the Tourism Authority makes it clear that the development of a Granitang eco-village is under consideration. This is not me making this up. You can look on page 13 of the annual report of the Grenada Tourism Authority, and you will see that statement in there. Now, if 
there is a Granitan ecotourism village, or eco-village as they call it, that the Tourism Authority says it is working on, this report will only be published after the Cabinet of Grenada has approved that particular um, project. It will not be published as an official statement or official position if the Cabinet of Grenada has not approved that project. I want to make that clear. Therefore, when Ms. Minister um, Oliver Joseph says he knows nothing about it, um, he, he, he either is not telling the truth or he must hold himself responsible for not knowing. Because if the cabinet meets and takes decisions, the conclusions of the cabinet are there. And if he happens to be out of the country, it's his responsibility to review the minutes and the conclusions of the cabinet to know what decisions may have been made in his absence. So I do not accept that he does not know anything about it. So I'm saying to you, there is in fact some Granitan eco-village under consideration by the government of Grenada. This is confirmed in the reports of 2014 of the Grenada Tourism Authority. That's one. Two, Byron Booker himself came out last night and said that First of all, the project is not in Granitan, it's in Birch Grove. Yes? Well, as far as I'm concerned, Byron Booker is not talking about the same project that the Tourism Authority is talking about. Because the Tourism Authority's project is called the Granitan Eco Village. It's not called the Birch Grove Eco Village. And I have no reason to believe that the project that Byron is talking about in Birch Grove is the same project as the one that the Grenada Tourism Authority is talking about in Granita. So I see a complete difference there. Thirdly, Byron makes it clear that the project that they're going to do is plant cabbage, plant carrots, and plant short crops. Right? So what is it? Maybe this is the Birch Grove Village where crops are going to be grown. But it's not the Granita Eco Village where we're talking about the, the, the cottages that will be nestled around the trees of which um, Minister Otwe spoke about. So this is not the same project. And let's not pretend it's the same project. I don't, I'm not saying that Byron doesn't have a project. He may well have a project in Bush Grove. The issue here is what is happening to the Granitang um, Forest Reserve and whether or not the government is developing or has approved the development of a, an eco-village inside the Granitang Reserve. So Boca making a statement and saying that is not true and so on as, uh, is of no merit, is of no moment, because it does not address the question. Uh, we cannot have, uh, uh, unless he's talking about a cabbage village, or a carrot village, or a short crops village, somewhere in Bush Grove, this is a different project than the one that uh, Minister Otto referred to. And let me say also, uh, Kim, that, um, you know, we cannot continue to be playing these games and blaming people. When Byron called me on the phone, I made it clear to Byron, do not call me with these senseless false accusations. Yeah? Do not start by accusing me of going about and running rumors. I did not go about and run rumors. I'm glad you just played the tape, Kim, and I thank you for that. I made it very clear that I was listening to GBN. I heard a caller um, uh, um, raise a question. I heard the minister respond. I heard the response the minister gave. And based on the response that the minister gave, we have reason as Grenadians to be concerned about the heritage and the future of Granitan Forest Reserve and call on the government to clear the air, call on the government to let us know what is going on. Come clean with the nation and tell us whether there are plans for things to happen inside of the Granitan Forest Reserve that we do not know of. I then went back and looked at the laws and explained to the population that the Granitan Forest Reserve is out of reach for developers, that they cannot in fact just take parts of Granitan and develop it, citing a 1906 piece of legislation and a 1949 piece of legislation in support of the claim that I was making. So this is not a case where Nazim Burg just gets up and accusing anybody, right? I heard the minister talking about malice and how we twisting and uh, this is because we power hungry and so on. You can hear that kind of bacchanal spirit coming through, the lies, the misleading approaches taken to these things. Anybody listening to my comments would be very clear. Any sensible individual, any person with basic common sense, etiquette, and culture listening to my comments will understand very clearly 
that I'm not accusing anybody of anything. So, 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 so um, these suggestions by Byron Booker that I'm going about making false claims and so on is deeply offensive. And I know it is motivated by his hatred. I know it is motivated by the fact that I have not, I was not prepared to simply issue a concession to him for his car under the table. And I stand by that position. The government of Tillman Thomas, of which I was a part, was not a government doing deals under the table with anybody. The government of Tillman Thomas was a government that was guided by the principles of transparency, of accountability, of respect for the institutions of the country, respect for the rule of law. So whatever hatred Mr. Booker holds, whatever bitterness he holds, whatever false accusation he wants to make, it is for him to do. I'm not going to uh, reciprocate with that hatred. I have nothing against him. I have no reason to be hostile towards him. I was shocked to hear from him because the last time I really spoke to him was an election morning, the morning after the election victory when he came to my house here and was pompousetting and parading and basically beating his chest because the NMP had won the election. I was polite enough not to ask him to leave my yard or to leave my house, but I let it plea because there's somebody that I've known for a very long time and we were good friends. But I want to make it clear, Byron uh, may be telling the truth, I don't know, I can't judge him, I, I cannot say he doesn't have a project going on in Birch Grove planting cabbage and carrots and short crops, I can only say. The project to which the Grenada Tourism Authority referred in Grand Dance, the, uh, in Gran Granitang, I'm sorry, the Granitang Eco Village, the project to which uh, the caller referred and the project to which Minister Oswe referred is not a project in Birch Grove. It's the Granitang Eco Village, and those of us who are concerned about our forest reserves, those of us who are concerned about our patrimony, those of us who are concerned about our ecosystems and our biodiversity, those of us who are concerned about land degradation and deforestation of our country must continue to speak up in defense of this issue and continue to demand and insist that the government comes clean and clear on this particular issue. The issue here is not Byron Booker. The issue is the government of Grenada, the statements that were made by Minister Otwe, and whether or not these statements are true. So it is not enough to be making these statements. I, I know, Kem, that, um, uh, you know, there are those who are lined up against the NDC. They will blame Nazim Burke for everything. I'm used to that. I'm not worried about it. My only regret is that some of the media houses, especially the GBN, continues to run these stories in a most irresponsible way. You know, without first vetting stories, without first asking questions, and simply to sensationalize news, as long as it's against Mazin Book, they continue to play this little game uh, in what appears to be um, planned actions. It's, it's not, they, they, they do not appear to be innocent activities. Um, but I will say no more on that. They will be the judge. At the end of the day, the people of Grenada will be the judge. And no amount of twisting, no amount of game playing, no amount of deceit will cause the people of Grenada to do what they don't want to do. So, Ken, I am, I am strengthened in my belief that the National Democratic Congress is on the right course. It must continue to call, hold the government's feet to the fire, continue to demand that things are explained, continue to resist. The secrecy, the cloud of secrecy that is governing our country today, the fact that things are not explained to the population, the fact that there are no consultations before things happen, we've seen it with Camahorn, we've seen it with Riviera, we've seen it with the Grenada Postal Corporation, we've seen it with uh, Rex Grenadian, and that process is continuing. So we have reason to be concerned. And so, Kem, um, let us continue to call, and I want to call on everybody, continue to look at what's going on in Granitang, because... Whatever carrot village um, Mr. Booker has going on, or, 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 or cabbage village Mr. Booker has going on in Birch Grove, is something quite apart from the Granitang Eco Village of which the minister uh, was alluding. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear Senator Nazimba.